1001 Inventions is a global educational initiative aiming to raise awareness of the Muslim contribution to modern civilization. The 1001 Inventions Touring Exhibition, together with a fascinating book and school activity packs, form a set of unique educational products that have received an overwhelming positive response from around the world. I have to say I'm absolutely delighted to be able to support the 1001 Inventions project. This is a scintillating and original initiative and incredibly timely. If you get a chance to go around the exhibition as well, it is fabulously organised. When I was at school, I was always taught that after the fall of the Roman Empire, we had this extraordinary dank period of a thousand years called the Dark Ages. And that really troubled me, because how can there be such a time in human history? It's very unlikely that people just stopped doing things. And of course, it's a terrible misnomer. There was no Dark Ages. For the thousand years after 500 AD, there was an extraordinary amount of activity that radiated out from Baghdad and along a glittering crescent through North Africa and into Islamic Spain. And the result of some of that activity is what you'll be seeing in the exhibition. The non-profit academic organisation, the Foundation for Science, Technology and Civilization, together with its project management arm, Muslim Heritage Consulting, have compiled years of rigorous research, working with an international network of scholars to bring life to a thousand years of missing history. Well, I think, I think what makes it uh, unique so far is that it is attempting to um, present in a very visual and hands-on way a, a large range of achievements, contributions, and developments, but present them so that they can be understood very easily by the youth today. And it is indeed the youth we must, we must educate. I'm Adam Hart Davis, and I'm just sad that I can't be at this wonderful exhibition. It is a super celebration of Islamic brilliance in the Middle Ages. The Arabs were the people who shone with their extraordinary mathematical ability and their extraordinary ability to observe the natural world and make sense of it. And that is what this exhibition and this book are all about. The exhibition includes over 40 interactive exhibits. From the first flying machine of Abbas ibn Furnas in the 9th century, to the introduction of ingenious automated water clocks by al Jazari in the 13th century, some of the most dazzling Muslim inventions have been brought to life with cutting-edge technology to visualize the creativity of this golden era. 1001 Inventions launched in Manchester on the 7th of March 2006 with a spectacular array of important personalities attending and unprecedented coverage by world media. which has been given to us by the Muslim community is immense. It is totally unrecognised. We do want to bring it to the attention of the national curriculum so that in time everybody will understand that the carpet, algebra, the, uh, the stars and everything around you that has been brought to us scientifically and technologically originated in the Muslim community. Today we all know that Islam and the West are not only compatible but can prosper together. That's what this exhibition demonstrates. The exhibition is important because it reminds us of the interdependent world in which we live and the need for us to recognise the contribution which can be made by all generations and all cultures. I think we need to actually transform learning and leadership. And learning and how people learn, what they do to achieve and where they go to and so on. And actually this exhibition uh, just puts that point very strongly across. It's an honor for us. It shows that Muslims in the past have contributed to the civilization. It shows the good work that they have done. And it's a very important message to the young today that it's important to build and not to destroy. We clearly feel that there are hundreds of Muslim role models of people who devoted their professional lives to the betterment of humanity. The book and sporting website and teacher's pack are contents to use in spreading what you can learn here today. 
This exhibition has appealed to a wide section of the public, with more than 30,000 people visiting in the first month. Multicultural audiences include school groups, students, academics, reporters, families and children. I think it's really good because it looks exciting. Do you think by coming to this exhibition this will help you understand more about Islamic culture? Yes, very much. Your children, do you think they would benefit from uh, information like this at school when they're growing up? Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I, I know Emily will go home and tell her teacher what she's been doing, you know. Did you know that, this, uh, that so many things were invented by the Muslim community? No, uh -uh. no. <laughs> How many people do you think really know that the camera originated as part of Arab culture and Muslim culture? I would say much, much less than 1%, unfortunately. And why do you think that is? Well, uh, the lack of exhibitions like the one that we are putting today to uh, bring back to life the contribution of Muslim scientists and technologists in the, in the past who have done some, uh, a lot of things that we are enjoying today and we cannot live without. It's very neat, it's very clean, it's uh, comprehensive. The content of the exhibition is brilliant. It's long overdue, this type of exhibition, um, for a multicultural society. My name is Michael, Michael Ingledow. I'm from the Council of Europe in Strasbourg. Um, we're very interested by this exhibition in the Council because we hope it can be something which we might um, profit from in terms of work we're doing on diversity and intercultural and interreligious dialogue. I think it should go to Europe and uh, we were discussing yesterday that the best place to start in would be Strasbourg, which is the European Council. Uh, and I hope it will also develop to go to other countries like Turkey, like Arab countries like Malaysia, Pakistan and so on and so forth. I'm particularly uh, thrilled to see this exhibit for the, demonstrated for the first time in Manchester, my hometown. I'm very excited that uh, we've had such a positive reaction from the public so far. 1001 Inventions is a success story helping to bridge the cultural divide through a universal understanding of human history and development. Of course, the tragedy about much Muslim heritage is that it was burnt in 1492 in Spain. Over a million Muslim texts were set into the fires. But with a project like 1001 Inventions, I think we're going to see a phoenix rise from the ashes.